you know, perfect is not the standard. Walking on water is not the standard, but working in the spirit of excellence is. That's the standard. Beating our prior best, that's the standard, right? Not getting comfortable, that's the standard. Uh, stretching, uh, that's the standard. And by the way, this right here, annoying, right? I got to tell my guys, listen, how much money are you making this year? 500,000. Well, I remember when I was making $500,000 a year too, you know? I, and I could imagine the income I'm at right now, I'm having these financial problems. Are you having these financial problems at 500,000? I am. I guess you got to make 750. Damn it. I got to improve again. And this guy is making 50 times more money than anybody in his family. But I told him, what's the standard? Is your standard competing and comparing yourself with everybody that you grew up with or actually finding your best? Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. What's cracking, everybody? My name is Smart Guy, Matt Sapali here. Hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, because of rising gas prices and inflation, a lot of people, thankfully, have now started their own business. So in a mastermind hosted by Elliot Martinez, he asked me to come in to do a mastermind with entrepreneurs that are just starting their endeavor. And we ask questions about marketing, advertising, hiring, firing, scaling, partnerships, et cetera, et cetera. So please check out this episode. It's an hour and a half conversation. You get the best highlights of 20 minutes. Here it is. Hey, Matt, my name is Bella. Um, the question that I had for you is uh, how do you prioritize like which projects or businesses you're going to put first, like what you're going to start your day out. Or you said like in the afternoon, you focus on um, your projects because I'm actually a nurse. So I work in a hospital, you know, three, four, sometimes five shifts a week. Sure. Um, we have a lot of other things that are going on too. Yes. So um, what do you kind of look for that and like how you prioritize what you're going to put your focus on and everything like that? So, so Bella, I didn't know your family. It means you being a nurse means you're half Filipino. So... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all my aunties are all, uh, they're all, Fili they're all Filipino nurses. So all, they're all standard issue, five, one with glasses <laughs> and a purse with everything. in. And it. they're always the best. <laughs> they're all the best. And they bring all sorts of food to, uh, to the nurse station. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so there's, sir, there, I, I categorize and see the short-term projects or long-term projects. So the short-term projects are projects that help life easier on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Things that make us immediate money today. Things that we can optimize today. Uh, some of these projects can be delegated. Okay. Uh, some of these projects don't need my fingerprint on it. They need my delegation and supervision on it and just project manage the whole thing. I get involved in a lot of the long-term projects. So I've been working on this long-term project for the last, I don't know, six to eight months is working on my book. Right. And for the first three months, the time that I allotted to, to, to the book was just finding out what title it was, a title and a headline. That was like, and then there's so much judge because anytime you do something for the very first time, I mean, this is my first book. I'm like, oh my God, what do you call it? Oh, I'm going to be judged. What happens? It sucks. And then it took me three months to get over it. Like, I don't care. Do it anyway. Right. So a long-term project, which will then also help the short term as well. So I, I've always felt too, uh, Bella, that the more I improve, the, so, you know, every business, you know, Jordan was asking me about systems and processes. Okay. So whatever systems and processes that I have, if I further improve the first two steps, the first 85, the first 15% of my process or system, 85% of it will be easier. I just improve, for example, our guys are selling, our guys are prospecting. If I just teach my guys how to open up a conversation better, how to prospect with credibility without showing weakness, uh, or, or looking salesy or weird, if I can improve that, then 85% confidence success will be the outcome. But if I don't teach them that, boom, then they're like, oh my gosh, I got so many objections. I got so much doubt. I, that's going to happen. So I have to improve the first 15% of the process. Uh, a, a portion of this too is also instituting um, social media into our campaign. I, I know we're, we're in a different uh, type of field, but if I can get a prospect or potential customer to understand us, to like us, to begin to trust us, the first 15% of the way, which is through social media, websites, and, and uh, video and content marketing, then I know by the time they call us, 85%, we're going to have a relationship. We're 85%, we're, they're going to feel like they already know us, right? So now the calls we get, it's not like, hey, Matt, what do you guys do? How can you help me? We don't get those calls anymore. The call's not like, hey, Matt, I just saw the video you did on life insurance. I want one. Hey, Matt, I just saw the, vi the video you just did on... Um, uh, 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 I'm optimizing your business to avoid, avoid distractions. I want to implement that. How, how can you help me? Hey, Matt, I just saw the video you did on how to create a mastermind group. Uh, help me, help me do that. So that's where the call, that's where the projects are 
to optimize my overall, my op, op, uh, optimize overall uh, daily experience. So therefore, I don't go to my business every day dreading it. I go to my business every day excited to improve it. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Thank you so much. Bella, keep helping people. Love it. First, first responders, frontliners. Hi, my name is Jessica. Hey, Jessica. Um, your team, when you are building teams or when you are for someone to work with, what are the main qualities that you look for in a person that you want on your team? Oh, very good question. Um, okay, it depends on it depends on the department, but overall, the company we put together, we uh, we left for two days to put together the company's values and principles. And, um, and a lot of those values and principles are, 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 are outlined. And uh, we'd like, it took us like hours just to figure out one word on some of these values and principles. But overall, I'm looking for somebody here that, you know, they're, they're going to say all the right things, Jessica. Yeah, I'm here to add value to your company and blah, 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 blah. And so I don't know, however, Jessica, until we see them in motion. I don't know until two weeks later whether or not they say who they say they are. I don't know until 30 days later they are who they say are. So whatever, whatever that is, you know, for example, I like hiring in twos, okay? I like hiring in twos. Here's why I like hiring in twos. Because if I hire just one, they're like, oh, I got the job. And they get very comfortable. Here's how I hire now, Jessica. I said, we're hiring twos, okay? I, 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 I individually interview them. Here's what we're about. We're about pop, 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 pop. We're about entrepreneurship. We're about, we're about capitalism. We're about, we're about money. We're about finance. We're about improving uh, our, our communities. We're about that, that, right? So we, we, we show them what those values and principles are, okay? And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm about that. I'm about that. Of course you're going to say that because you want a paycheck. Okay. So we'll, we'll see how you really feel about it when you come in. So I tell them, all right, for example, Andres, you got a job. Malcolm, you got a job. I want you guys to report on Monday, 9 o'clock. And they meet for the very first time with me, but together. I tell them very boldly in the, in the boardroom, congratulations, guys, you got a job. I got some good news for you and some bad news. What do you want first? I said, the bad news. I said, the bad news is one of you is going to get fired. I don't know who it is. Okay? One, one of you guys is going to get fired. One of you guys is going to get let go. And so for the first 30 days, we're going to pay you as an independent contractor before we, before we put you on, on, uh, um, on before you W to you. Because we want to see, because the type of person we're looking for is just not a nine to five type of person. Like we want to create entrepreneurs, right? Not just employees. We're going to create entrepreneurs, meaning that you're going to treat this business like it's your, you're going to treat this job like it's your business. The difference is I'm putting up the capital. I'm putting up the risk. I'm putting up the branding. I'll buy you the equipment. I'll, I'll create the relationships you need to create. But at the same time too, you're also sharing the profitability of your department, right? And so we're going to see which one of you guys are really about building something bigger than yourself, we'll find out after 30 days. Now, the good news is you guys are who you say you are and we hire you both. Okay. So which one do you guys want? Well, we want the job. Well, so we'll, we'll see. And then about two weeks in, we're, we kind of get an idea who calls in late, who, sh- who, who doesn't want to really show up, who's really participating in the meetings, who's, meet- who's missing deadlines, who's not very creative, who's not creating, uh, putting ideas to the table, who's not calling each other out. We're going to find out in about two weeks, and we'll really find out and evaluate that again the next two weeks to see if we really want to keep you on board here. How, how many people have we let go video-wise from that, from that apartment? Like, as soon as we moved here to Dallas. So we've been through like five guys already. <laughs> Jessica, one of the people said, said, oh, yeah, I'm about this stuff. By lunchtime, he went for lunch. We haven't got, we haven't seen him back yet. <laughs> he hasn't come back from lunch. You know, that's five months ago. So I'd love to pay him because he was here for three hours, but uh, he hasn't come back from lunch yet. But I think the, the thing too is too, Jessica, you, you, you might also hire without knowing it competition. This is trying to figure out what you're doing. So therefore they can learn from me and do it on their own. That's why hire slow, fire fast. Hire slow. That's why it takes me 30 days to fully hire them. But as soon as I know that they're not, they're not on board. And the thing is too, Jessica, I'm not looking, I'm not looking to change people. You know, the, the moment I decided that uh, um, I'm not God. And by the way, even if you are God, can you change people? <laughs> you, could be, you could be Jesus the Christ walking on water, creating miracles, and you still don't have the power to change people. You, can, you, can, you have the power to create miracles, but you don't have the power to change people. Because God gave us a thing called free will. So 
I'm not looking to change uh, people. Um, I'm looking to find people that want to buy into our crusade, into our message. Uh, the the flip side to that, Jessica, is you just have to have a high volume of resumes and um, applicants coming in. So therefore, one one employee or two employees aren't bullying you. Say, well, Jessica, if you fire me, it's going to take forever for somebody and you know, for you to replace me. And then back to Jordan's uh, original question, as long as your process and systems are are written down and there's a checklist, okay, you can always train that to somebody else. What somebody brings to your company is not what to do. What somebody brings to your company is their energy, their personality, the other 20% that you can't um, that you can't duplicate because that's their unique ability. But the other 80%, you're handing them a system, a process, and a protocol that they can follow, that you can monitor, you can track, you can hold them accountable. But the other 20% is what they bring to the table, which is the unknown. Yeah, building a social media following because we have a lot of artists in this group. Um, I don't know if you can see Faith behind John. She has her own book. She has a you know a journal. Um, Graciana's on here. She's an amazing artist. Um, do you uh, you know people say consistency is the way to build that social media following? Is that how it went for you? Like, did you see that is what really yeah. helped grow? We just had uh, at our event in Daytona Beach. We have two thousand five hundred people at our event. We had Deion Sanders out there. We had uh, E.T., Eric Thomas. We had the Hodge twins. We had a bunch of a bunch of other guys. But one of the people that broke the stage for us, uh, she was singing the Star Spangled Banner, American Anthem, and uh, God Bless America. She's a TikTok star, right? And her name is uh, Raquel Rains. And, uh, uh, and she blew up on TikTok because she was just consistent with TikTok. And you'll also s- start seeing too, Emily, that social media will reward consistency. Why? What's in, it for, what's in it for social media to show your videos? What's in it for YouTube to show your videos? What's in it for TikTok to show your videos? What's in it for IG Reels or Facebook to show your videos? Because they can sell advertising. But if you're not a consistent uploader of new content, why should your, your profile and videos come up to the top of the algorithms to sell advertising on? So the more, the more consistent you are with putting up social media content and not being in a phase of, I, I've got to perfect everything. My, even my team was telling me, because we, j- we literally just started TikTok, like we just started, what, five days ago? We, yeah, a week and a half ago. We started from zero. We're at uh, 50, what, 40, like 50, 4,300? We're at 4,300 right now in four or five days, uh, you know, a week and a half. And we we're just uploading one, two reels and TikToks a day. And all they're doing is just taking my long form content, and just slicing up to 30, 60 second reels, so it's not that like we had to redo anything, but the consistency of that TikTok liked, right? So that was our that was our that was our strategy, and the hardest thing for a creative to do <laughs> is have that consistent work, right? Having that consistent song, having that consistent project, having a consistent drawing, having a consistent whatever that is is for a creative because you're you're so involved in getting creative about it, yeah. then you got you got to put the discipline behind it. My my rule my rule is an eighty percent rule. Meaning that if it's 80% good, put it out there. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then, and then the next time you do it, perfect the 80% of the remaining 20%. Yeah. Right. So now you're at what's the number there? 94%. So the remaining 6%, you perfect the remaining 80% of the outstanding, 30, uh, outstanding 6%. And now you're at 98, 99%. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So anything takes, takes time three, at least three times. It's what I call my 80% rule. By the time I do it the third or fourth time, I, I got, I got it down. Matt, right. Matt, I actually have a question for you. You know what? Because I know you have 3000 agents. So me and John, what we want to do is um, inspire younger entrepreneurs, right? Where people say, Oh, they're not work and show them they can do anything. Right. But a guy like me, I'm very result driven. So, you know, me, what I said, I like to be held accountable to my own words. And then okay. John and Danielle, sure, sure. his wife, they know how I am. If I said it, okay, look, guys, so far I said this and I, I've done this. That's my result, right? If I said it, I'm going to do it. Don't just say it to me. But how do you hold your 3,000 agents? Because like Michael, she's amazing for perfectionist. So that's why I was like, just do it. You know, I don't, I don't want them to overthink it because, you know, the worst thing is trying to be so perfect that it doesn't get done. And she's good at what she does, but you know what I'm saying? But how do you work with someone like Michael, who is so talented, 
And how do I help her to flourish better and show her, hey, it doesn't have to be perfect, but then work with certain people who my work ethic is like you. At night, I'm still working. You know, like I don't yeah. stop. Yeah, I, yeah. I tell my wife, we'll split some, we'll split some time for dates, but we die that, just let me focus on what I gotta do. You know what I'm saying? I, I know you probably did those boundaries yeah. with your, your wife as well, because it takes work. Nobody you can yeah. build, you can't build nothing without work. How do you get amazing people that are on your team that I see super potential, but you hold them accountable? My problem is I can be a little direct. Sometimes I don't want to be direct because I want them to see like, look, look at what I'm doing. I'm building results. Yep. So I'm not just telling you, I'm doing what I told you. How do you hold yep. them to that standard? When we talk about the projects that they're working on and things that they say they're going to take on. And let's say things either happen or they don't happen. I unpack why it happened. What did you do right to make this happen? What did you do right to make this happen? Who, who, tell me about the negotiation. Talk about the conversation. Recall that phone call. Do you still have that email? Share it with me. What happened during the conversation to make this happen? The flip side is true too as well. Why didn't this happen? What, what didn't happen? How, did you call this person? Did you ask this question? No? How come you didn't ask this question? Yet, next time you go through that, down that road, ask these questions. You need to get deep. So a lot of people answer questions up here at the superficial level. For example, I learned that with my kids. Hey, Jojo, how's school? Good. <laughs> what was good about it? Uh, you know, lunch. What? No. Now, why do you say lunch is good versus math? Well, how come how come uh, uh, science wasn't as good as spelling? What's going on? Which which do you prefer better? So then I get I, I have to pry, I have to so therefore they can start opening because they got to warm up too. They they got to they got to create that trust and, and and figure out what's going on. And then I take a consulting hat, right? I, I I say forget for a second I'm your boss. Forget for a second I'm your dad. Forget a second. If I'm from the outside looking in, I'm just coaching you in this situation. What do you think about this situation versus this situation? Why are you making this decision versus this decision? What's the result of you making this decision and not making this? What's the result financially, time-wise, deadline-wise, reputation-wise, self, self-worth-wise? What's, what's happening? What's either happening or not happening that's affecting all those things? What are you going to do differently in the next time around you do it? What other calls? What's your short list? What, what's your 10 takeaways? For example, Elliot, we expected another at our event, we, we, even though we had 2,500 people, we expected 3,200 people. How come we didn't have 700 extra people there? What didn't we do right? We came up with 11 things that we could have done better. And bro, we, you know how long we've been doing it? We've been doing events you know, straight like this for six straight years, two times, three times a year. And we're still screwing it up, right? And how, and how do we get it better? How do we get it better every time? And, and I don't think, Elliot, um, you know, perfect is not the standard. Um, walking on water is not the standard, um, but working in the spirit of excellence is. That's the standard. Beating our prior best, that's the standard, right? Not getting comfortable, that's the standard. Uh, stretching, that, that's the standard. And by this right here, annoying, right? Uh, I, I, like, Ellie, I got to tell my guys, listen, how much money are you making this year? 500000 Well, I remember when I was making $500,000 a year too, you know? I, and I can imagine the income I'm at right now. I'm having these financial problems. Are you having these financial problems at 500,000? I am. I guess you got to make 750. Damn it. I got to improve again. And this guy's making 50 times more money than anybody in his family. But I told him, what's the standard? Are, is your standard competing and comparing yourself with everybody that you grew up with or actually finding your best? Or finding my best. Then stop being comfortable with $500,000 income. You can, you know, do you remember? What you said the other day in front of your 100 people, that making money is simply a byproduct of you helping more people. Well, how come you're not helping more people? Oh, my gosh. You're right. I know. Well, you just told me you want to get better. I'm just re-reminding you what you said you wanted to do. And, and, and that's all that is. Like, every time I meet somebody, Elliot, I think about four or five things I remember from them by memory. So, therefore, when I call them again and hold them against what they said they wanted to do, I can remember those things. Whether I take notes, it's just, it's a game I play. Boom, 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 boom. Like, what things I remember about Deion Sanders? What things I remember about Eric Thomas? What thing I remember about, Tommy, what's the thing I remember, I remember about Patrick Bedday? What's the thing I remember about, blah, 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 blah. I just go through all those different things and I put them on my notes. So therefore, when I talk to them again, I bring those things up. So therefore, they feel I'm listening to them because it's better to be, interest, it's better to be interested 
than interesting. I want to show people I'm interested in where you're going and how of any effect or benefit your friendship and association with me can help you get there. And if I am awesome, if not, no big deal. I'm good. And you're, you need to find somebody better than me. And I'm good with that too. Right. So that, that's, that's, that's the interesting thing about having a team. You know, my, my staff has been with me for nine years. You know, I, I don't, I don't have a lot of turnover here at our, at our company in terms of staff salespeople. Yeah. But staff, no, they've been with me for a while. They kind of know what we know. I've seen them get married, sadly divorced. I've seen them have more kids, grandkids, you know, and, and the older I've gotten to Elliot, the older I've gotten, the less weddings and birthday parties I get invited to. Sadly, the more funerals I get invited to, the older I get, right? 20s and 30s, I got invited to a lot of birthday parties and weddings. 40s, 50s, I'm finding myself being invited to more funerals. Sad part about it, perspective. You do not look like you're in your 50s, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> Phil, 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 I'm, uh, I'll be 40. How old will I be this year? 40. I'll be 49 this year. Dang. Really? I'll be 49 this year. Yeah. Well, pray, praise the Lord, man. Just, uh, you know, there's a difference between being stressed versus putting yourself under pressure. And, and that's where my wife and I, we put ourselves under pressure a lot, under pressure, under pressure. I mean, shoot, we just argued last night because we put ourselves under so much pressure. Like if, if, if you're like a fly on the wall, listening to us, <laughs> I've been here because uh, he, 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 you know, he's around me all the time and shooting video and content. And uh, there's quite a few arguments you see Sheena and I uh, run into this. <laughs> it's, it's a funny thing, but at the end of the day, Hey babe, listen, love you. Let's figure it out. I'll see you later. Let's go to dinner. Yeah. The case would be. That's that's putting yourself under pressure. Stress is like I can't deal with this shit, and I know I got to face it tomorrow. Yeah, well, pressure is good because it helps you to grow. Yeah. Well, pressure is what creates diamonds, baby. Hey, tell me something. So I have a question that my wife yeah. wants to ask. Give me one second. Got you. No problem. Uh, okay. What are your standards to feel successful? And um, what is success? What is success to you? Uh, I'll answer that one. It's, it's a fast one. Definitely success to me is knowing that in people's lives, I'm making, uh, making a difference. Somehow, some way I'm making a difference to them. Like, for example, we, we brought in one of our, my guest speakers from uh, LA, our LA location, uh, Elvis Okafor, immigrant from Nigeria. What Nigerian don't you know that doesn't have three, four, five degrees, right? So he's out here with a finance degree, engineering degree. He's making 50000 a year, 80000 a year in LA. We were coming to the business with teaching him insurance. Today, he's making 350 a year. He's my guest speaker today. Because of my obedience to getting better every day, our culture and our company is a lot of guy like him to not only have 350,000 a year income, but have 250,000 in savings, not get worried about the pandemic and still build his mom a multi-million dollar home in Nigeria. So that's making an impact. When I pay $21 million in commissions to my guys, forget what I make. I paid $21 million in commissions to my guys last year during the pandemic. I know I'm making an impact. That means they're not standing in Bread lines, food lines, food pantries, not asking for unemployment checks, they're not asking for government assistance. We're making an impact. When I teach a man or a woman how to learn how to fish, to learn how to control their income, to manage their finances properly, so therefore their money's working for them, and they're not dependent on anybody, that makes me feel like I'm making an impact, right? And that's when I pick up the phone, I'm calling somebody to either recruit them to my team or to sell them a policy. It's not to make the money or get an override on their income. It's to change their life. Cause I know I've been on the other side of that phone call. So that to me is, that to me is making a difference. Um, and what was your first question? Uh, first part portion of that, Elliot? What is the, if you have any standards for yourself to feel successful, which is just making an impact. Yeah. So, so I, so to quantify that, to quantify that we get together. So my, my board keeps me accountable. Uh, so for example, just this week, we're, we're holding accountable to our board. It's straight numbers. Are you meeting budget? Are you meeting your numbers? Why aren't you meeting your numbers? Okay, you met your numbers. Awesome. What's working right? What isn't working right? So if, if I'm not meeting with somebody on a weekly basis to hold me accountable, I feel like I'm walking around naked. I, right? So, and like, because the thing is, I don't know what I don't know, especially working for yourself. Like, I don't know what I don't know. So I have to be around somebody that sometimes makes me feel like this. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and uh, for example, uh, uh, this pastor I'm coming to here in, in Dallas, he makes me feel like this 
from a financial, not a spiritual standpoint, but from a financial standpoint. Why? Because when he started his ministry 22 years ago, he made $600,000 in a month. I haven't made $600,000 a month yet, but he took 10% of that, started his own church. He found some investors and he created this church. And his pastor is still working heavily in the business community in leadership, uh, leadership development and coaching. So he doesn't need the church's money to pay him what I'm saying, right? He's self-sustainable. Right, exactly. Exactly. So he's telling the church to give, but everybody in the church knows that pastor's a multimillionaire, regardless if you give it to him or not. You're giving to the Lord. You're giving to the church, right? And so I need a guy like that in my life because I don't have anybody like that in my life. I had one in Chicago. I don't want to have here in Dallas to stretch me in that way, to make sure that I'm humbled uh, every day that I got to go make a difference, that I don't read my own headlines. You know, because sometimes you're the chief distribution officer of this company. You, I walk in, with inside my company, I'm known, okay? But I'm not reading my headlines. Every time I walk into a new office, oh, Matt's here, Matt. Listen, I'm looking for the newest person. Where's the newest person? Where's the new person? Oh my gosh, where's that Marine? Where's that sailor? Where's that soldier? I have a personal thing for veterans, right? That's my first uh, wave I go to is, is the vets. I just have a natural uh, disposition towards veterans because I was in that uniform too. And I know what they're, what they're going through, the things that they had to face. And did you just get divorced? Yeah, I know. I was there too. <laughs> it was language inside the military. But th those that's how I know I'm holding it, through the accountability process and the discipline process. Sometimes I'm crying. Yeah. Like how, how come you're not better in this area? Right. Uh, my, I remember telling Patrick PBD at, at this time I was 41, 42 years old. I told him, I have no time to waste. If you got to guide me in an area that I need me, get, just give it to me raw. I'm a big boy. I can take it. Right. And he gives it to me. And then I have to implement it right away. Otherwise his desire to mentor me, coach me, hold me accountable is less if I don't apply. If he finds himself telling me the same thing 30 days later, see, hey, listen, Matt, you're still asking the same questions. How can we still ask the same questions? Is that an out why you don't want to do it? That's why you're asking me the same question just in a different way? Because you really don't want to do it? Stop asking me the same, same, same question. My challenge for him is to have him never say, you've asked me the same question five different ways. Why aren't you doing it? What are you scared of? I don't ever want him to ask me that question. And my reputation with my mentors is we, we get mentored to do something once, boom, it's immediately implemented. The next time we get together, hey, PBD, remember you told us to implement this? Boom, here's our systems now. Here the people that are hired to do it, and here's the increase of the revenue and profitability and retention, blah, 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 whatever that is. Here's what happened. What's, what's my next move? What else, what else am I missing? Awesome. Okay, nothing about this. Oh, man, I thought I had this unlocked. What, there's something else? <laughs> there's something else? Remember, there's always something else. And the moment you think you're here, that's a mistake. You got to pop that lid off. John, uh, John Maxwell's book, 21 Laws of Irrefutable Leadership says, his first rule is the law of the lid. You feel like this making 200,000 years is good? Hey, pop open that lid. You thought making 500,000 years is good? Pop open that lid. Why? Through our financial resources, we can bless and help so many more, so many, so many more other people. Your success is going to bless and help so many more other people.